Look at that. That is so crazy. So I'm going to give it something kind of complicated. So I'm going to say, uh, I want a button in the bottom left hand corner of the sidebar. I got to show you guys this. There's a new LLM available through Mistral AI. So you can go to chat.mistralai and you can feel free roll up right now and do canvas type functions where you can prompt it to make code and then see the output of this code. And I just want to show you an example app that I made. This is, you know, not a trivial application. This calculates the route for you. It's the fastest route between two locations. So I can go in here, I can click on one location on the map and click on another. And then I can say calculate route and it'll give me this line. And then along the line, it will tell me every step of the journey that I need to take. So this is sort of uh, reminiscent of MapQuest or something like that. So we're just gonna play around with it for a little bit and I'll show you some of the things that um, <clears throat> I'd like to do right so there's uh basically once you get off the ground with this I'll, I'll go back to the beginning of my conversation and tell you how i got here so when i came in i said hey can you make a mapping application where i fill out a form and drop two points and calculate the fastest walking route between two locations and it said okay cool i'll do this with leaflet and react and for a while it wouldn't render and it errored and it did some of these things and i, and I had to tell it to show me it in Canvas and then to kind of change how I was approaching it. But once we got on track and I could see something here, probably about um, eight to nine prompts in, then we had a, a working app with code and, and we were rolling, right? So some cool features here. You can see the code when, when they actually update this code, you'll see it changing line by line in the Canvas, which is really nice compared to the way ChatGPT's got it set up. It kind of, even Claude too, just sort of blasts and updates the canvas um, in a way that you aren't really aware of the changes. In Mistral, it's like very intentional in the UI, how it shows this to you. So I'll give you an example here. So one of the things that I wanted to do is, so I'm gonna ask you for a couple changes. Uh, can you put the calculate route button in a sidebar? at the top let's say this sidebar should also hold all the directions they are generated also can you <clears throat> make the whole theme of this app more modern and dark theme okay so all right, so I throw that prompt in here. Here in a second, you're going to see updates that are coming in. Uh, it does start very fast. I think that this is referred to as flash. A lot of large language models are referring to as like flash rendering. Um, after a while, Mistral does get a lot slower. So initially, when you start using it, you're like, wow, this thing is so fast. You know, it's mind blowing. And that's cool and everything. But uh, eventually, that does. It does get a little, a little slower, um, but it is doing a lot more, right? So you'll see here it's building the code out. You've got some, <clears throat> some nice features. I'm uh, pretty sure you can go in here, and then with the with that button there that we kind of passed over, um, get some more like line by line rendering, which is something that, or line by line prompting, something that ChatGPT has. You can go and you can select a a line. I think in Claude you can do it too. We say, hey, I, I want to do this with this line, and it'll say, okay, cool, no problem. Okay, so, all right, cool. So it sort of did what I wanted. It's got it set up where calculate route and the instructions are in there. Um, and what I could say is, uh, can you put that sidebar on the left-hand side of the map? Also, can you pull in a different base map with imagery instead <clears throat> now I'll, I'll give it something complex i also want a top bar that gives me stats for total distance in miles and total time in minutes 
as two, like I'll say, um, political stat based widgets. So two blocks, one for miles, one for time. All right, so we'll see what it does there. And this is headed it into, you know, I, I work, my mainline work is all with mapping applications most for the most part. And there's a lot here that is uh, super, <clears throat> super robust, um, non-trivial to make a prototype this quickly. Now, obviously you're only making it in one file. I think that the next step for these is gonna be when they, they move to do multiple files that interact. But the logic for that is still kind of elusive if you use things like um, Willow and there's a couple of other cursor, I think, or if you have used um, get the GitLab option, I forgot what it is, not co well, Copilot for sure. But if you use the, uh, I'm, I'm just skipping my mind right now, but it's, you can use it in Virtual Studio Code or Visual Studio Code and you can, um, like code inside of that 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 doesn't really understand the reaction between files it's like a very like line by line thing you can do um okay yeah so check us out so we have a it's updated with imagery so that's great so we could say hey i want to go from here to here and then we'll calculate the route okay great so interesting it says i'm really skeptical that it's a thousand miles because this is uh a to B uh, location uh, in, I think we're in France or London or whatever, wherever we're at. So there's no way it could be a thousand miles. So I'm going to tell it miles are calculated correctly. Too high. Fix that. <clears throat> Time also seems very good as well. Um, let me, let me try another scenario. Oh, interesting. So there is, I have to drag and drop these, but I'd like to have like a reset button, I think. So I'll say, <clears throat> I want a reset button as well that resets the start and end points and the route and the directions. Wipes the state. <clears throat> I want that button right below the calculate routes button. All right, cool. So we'll wait for those changes, you know, so we're gonna get another button. We're gonna get like a reset on the whole workflow for the A to B point drop, and then we're gonna get our metrics correct. I'd be interested in seeing this, um, yeah, be just, you know, more accurate because right now it's not, there's no way that it's, you know, 286 miles to go, whatever it was, like five blocks in London <clears throat> that we were, we were dropping. Even if you were the world's slowest walker, I think that's definitely a stretch. So these changes, you know, super, super slow. Um, but, you know, it's better than writing it all yourself. I mean, we've come just massive, massive strides since we uh, started, which is only a few minutes ago. Um, before I started this video, I think it's been eight minutes into this video. And before then, I was maybe working for like three minutes just to get on, on board. I mean, this is super powerful. I mean, the big thing is that it's free. There's some other functionality in Mistral, like it has um, what it calls agents, which... I'm not sure if that's the same way that ChatGPT is doing operator and some of these other agent items, like where it can do web scraping and then compile data. However, um, probably what it is, I'm going to check that out later, and we'll give um, we'll give a look at that because I think that could be definitely very useful. Okay, so we've come to the end of our HTML. Great, we have the reset button. We have the imagery. Let's slide in here, drop point, drop point. We'll do something super quick, calculate route. Two minutes, distance, oh, perfect. And then if I hit reset, oh my gosh, incredible. Look at this, and we made this in no time at all. 
Calculate route. Wow. Look at that. That is so crazy. So I'm going to give it something kind of complicated. So I'm going to say, uh, I want a button. It'd be bottom left hand corner of the sidebar that allows me to download a geo JSON file or a KML or a, I'll be really complicated. I'll say or a CSV of the start point, end point, and the line. Also want the directions or the route to somehow be added to the meta data of the of the file that is downloaded. So this is a pretty impressive task if you can pull this off because I'm basically saying, hey, can you give me multi-file export capability? Then from there, can you let me download it? Um, well, that's part of the export capability, but can you, can you then take the data that's in the application that you've rendered dynamically with this, with the directions and the point and start and the end time and all the geometry, and then can you pull that down for me and, um, and combine it to where I can just click a button and get it. And that's what's, that's definitely, that's definitely super, super crazy. So I think one of the best things about this is, you know, you can go along and learn, you can see these changes and you'll see it's. It's making little changes along the way to certain things, the CSS, the HTML, it's adding a button. It's, it's put, putting in a download route button right here. And we go down. You, the value is that you can learn what's being written and how functional it is and how it functions. So there is some reverse engineering and educational perspective that you can do if you're trying to learn how to um, become a developer that is super valuable. Uh, one thing I haven't tried in this is for the ability, the ability for this to do notebooks. It seems to do HTML, J JavaScript, and CSS rendering very well. And I haven't really seen the the limits of that, except for when I started, it didn't seem to like working with React, which is understandable. It seems to do very well when you tell it, "Hey, um, you know, forget the React, re forget the React. Just give me something in HTML that I can work on and see." Okay, so looks like we're at the end. Okay. Let's look at... I think after it's done giving you the breakdown of what it did, then it renders. Okay, so let's see if I drop point, drop point, calculate route. Okay. If I hit download route, you can see it doesn't have... I click it, nothing happens. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, nothing happens, but um, that's interesting. So I'll, t I'll tell it that nothing happens when I click download route. <clears throat> and there are no different options for JSON, CSV, or KML, KMC. Fix that, please. All right. So we'll let this cook for a minute. All right. So with the changes it made, it gave me this drop down for the file type. Still doesn't do anything. Kind of unsure if that's because this is a little browser all of its own and it's not my main browser. I'm thinking that probably has something to do with it because when you do on click events, uh, maybe that's the case, but we could just slide down. We could just look at the download uh, route button. So let's see. Go down. Let's find that. <clears throat> and we'll just see if we can ask a direct prompt. We'll just be like, hey, like this, uh, this download route, like this doesn't. This button doesn't seem to work. You make it so that when I click, file will download. All right, cool. So 
it can get section by section selection on elements of your code block and you can say hey like specifically address this area um i do think it, it does kind of go if i'm not mistaken here it's going like top to bottom yeah so it goes top to bottom through your your whole code it doesn't flash and do it all at once this is actually an optimization thing i think should be looked at because after a while what you'll see is that the code will stay the same. This is passing through things, looking at them, and then it's not making changes. So eventually a big optimization in these types of tools is going to be that it just goes straight down to where it needs to work. It already understands the context of everything that it's been working on, and it just uh, modifies and changes what is uh, relevant for change. <clears throat> but it it does seem to have like a very linear pass, which is not this is not unique to Mistral. So let's see what happens when it comes out. Okay, and just for transparency's sake, so it, it didn't it didn't nail it this time. But one one thing to keep in mind is that um, the canvas is kind of weird in here. I asked it for it to remove the canvas, and I thought I could pop it back up. I thought it was like a a button that I could toggle, but. I don't know where the canvas went, so I'm going to say, can you show me in canvas again? So it seems like I kind of have to invoke the canvas through the chat UI, but there doesn't seem to be a dynamic way to pull that up. But okay, cool. So all I have to do is ask. So just keep that in mind when you're using Mistral. You got to ask for it to fire off and give you the, um, to give you everything in canvas. So we're going to see what happens here next. We're going to try to get this working, and then I'm going to give it a really interesting challenge. I'm going to say, hey, I want you to rework this whole thing in a different stack using the ArcGIS SDK. Okay, so to really see what this thing can do, because um, we didn't get the download working, I think it's a browser thing. I'm going to say, hey, I want you to rebuild all this using the ArcGIS JavaScript APIs, SDKs, just whatever from, from Esri we can grab. Keep the same interface and functionality, change the base map to have more street labels, but to also have imagery and make the design more sleek, update the font to something that is just a, I don't know, it's just said, give me something a modern tech style. I don't even know what that means. It's just something that I, I gave it. I want to see how it interprets it and remove all the export functionality because it doesn't seem to be working. So here in a second, I'll show you what that looks like, but this is basically saying, hey, you built something. Now I want you to rebuild it using a different stack of sorts, right? I want you to change all of this. I want you to use different tech. It was using Leaflet. Now I'm like, hey, I want you to use Esri. So very interested to see what it does. We'll come back in a second. All right, so out the gate, just in the uh, interest of honesty, didn't show a map. I can't do anything. So let's tell it to run again and tell it to fix these things. Okay, so for whatever reason, it had to go back to Leaflet. The ArcGIS JavaScript API SDK was not working uh, in this UI. It does work just fine. I think just the way that this renders in the canvas, I think it's very limited to certain um, ways of rendering HTML and CSS. I think that some of the more dynamic stuff, like actually spinning up an environment, doing things with React, that type of thing is maybe out of scope uh, for the way that this is this is working. But we got back to where uh, everything does work. We do not have a download, but I can click A and B, calculate the route, reset the route, and then do that anywhere in the world. So overall, I think that that is super cool. Very fascinating. Super handy. And the way that this is set up, this is all one file. So you could just host this app somewhere on a web page and arguably it would work just fine. You'd be able to do that. You'd probably be able to put this into a mobile design as well. So very cool. If you hung out with me this long, thanks so much for watching. Just want to show you a really awesome new AI tool. Definitely go check it out. I think this is super handy for prototyping. Definitely really valuable for ideation, education, whatever else. So you hung out with me this long go ahead and drop a thumbs up on that video it really helps get the videos out to people boost the channel etc for the algorithm thanks so much and i'll see you in the next one